Hi, I'm Anne from Game Like a Mother. Today I'm going to show you how to play Colt Super Express. It's ages eight and up, three to seven players, and takes 15 minutes to play. Let me show you how it works. The goal of the game is to be the last bandit remaining on the train. If you do that, you win. You set up by placing a locomotive in front and then one train car per player plus an additional one at the end. Each player is dealt four cards and on each round of play, they will select three of these cards, discard the other one for another time to play. And then once each player has done that, you will play out your moves uh, starting with the first player. When you have decided who the first player is going to be, this rotates over the course of the game, uh, they are placed in the second to last train car facing forward. We're saying this is clockwise. So player number two is red, who is facing forward in the next train car. And then the third player in this three player game we have set up is facing backward, facing them um, right next to the locomotive. It is important that they are in the bottom part of the train. They can't, they start out inside the train. And the general rule of thumb is half are facing forward, half are facing backward, and you round up to facing forward if you have an odd number of players. The game is played in a series of rounds divided into two phases. We already did phase one for this turn, which is the scheming phase, where out of the four cards you have selected, each player has selected three cards, place them face down, and now we're on to the shooting phase where you are resolving the cards one by one, starting with the first player. And we're just going to show you what the cards do as they come up and we show you what gameplay looks like. So first is yellow and her first action is to move up. You can be inside the train or on top. Um, this card, if you're up, you're down. If you're down, you go up. So, and you can do that even on the locomotive. Um, if there's already a player up here, uh, like a good bandit, you always go up with your back to the back part of whatever part of the train you're going up on. So you wouldn't go in front of this person, you'd go behind. Moving on to player two, we're saying this is clockwise, so it goes from yellow to red. Player two is playing the card that it just changes your orientation. So this player doesn't do anything else besides turn around. If there had been another player on this car with him and he turned around, he doesn't do the thing where he, he changes his position in the car. All you do is you pivot if this, if this is what you have played. So now he is facing that direction. And then it's time for player number three to go and she is going to use this to move to the next car. You move over one and um, she is entering behind someone else. And uh, like a good bandit, she is keeping her back to the end of the train where she came in. So even if there are, are a few other, whoever the newest one is, um, has their back to the end. It works on the top too. If you're going from the top over here, um, you just keep your back to the side you came in on. Uh, a key part of playing this card is if you play it while you're on the end of the train and you go off, you're out, you've lost. Same thing for if you are in the front and you go off the front of the locomotive, you are out of the game. So you need to be careful when you play this card. And now after everyone has played their first card, Play just comes back around to the first player again and they play their second card on top of their um, stack here and it is fire, everyone's favorite card. Unfortunately for them, no one is in their direct line of sight so they wouldn't have shot anybody. If they had still been down here, you shoot the next person directly in front of you. And if you shoot someone, they are shot back a train car, whatever direction in, from which they are shot, so they move back here and then they are on their side. Um, if somehow this person was already on their side here, he would just shoot green and green would be shot into the next train car. If yellow were 
in the same train car as everyone else, uh, she can still shoot someone even in the same train car and it would be the same thing. If it was next person in line, Red would move on to his back in the next car. And if there was a situation like this and she shot Red, uh, he's out of the game. He gets shot off the train car. If you get shot off, you're off, uh, out. Same thing if it was over here and she shot him, he's out. There's no coming back from that. And the last part about being shot is if they were up here and yellow shot red into this back uh, train car, uh, his next action, no matter what card he had placed, which would have been the shoot action, instead of performing that action, he wakes up from being stunned um, from being shot. So that's all he does. He stands up no matter what card he has placed here. That's what he does. Okay, so we're going to continue play as the cards were actually played. So yellow shot, no one was there. It's now red's turn. And red shooting, no one is there. So it's green's turn. She turns around and we just keep on playing all these cards. Yellow's moving forward. Red comes up, has his back to the back of the train car and Green comes up, and so he, this is very good to see, even though yellow, he, he comes to the back, you adjust as needed with everybody along. Now, the round is over because everyone has played all of their cards that they had programmed. The last bit is you take a caboose off every after every round of play. So on the back of the caboose is loot money. And this goes to uh, whoever is the furthest back player on the train, which is green in this case. Uh, so green would get to collect this. This is useful at the end if multiple players are left, you play until either just one player is left at any point. Um, these two are gone and red's the only person left, they would win. It doesn't matter if that green would have loot. But if at the end, red and green are left on the locomotive together and all the rest of these are gone. Whoever has collected either the most loot cards or in case of a tie, the single loot card with the greatest value of loot on it is the winner. So we put these back here. This is collected. This moves on clockwise. So we're saying clock's going like this over to red. And then each player gets to have all of their cards back and nothing else moves from these cards. They look at them and decide which ones they're going to play, takes one out and places them face down in the order that they want to play for the next round. Also in a situation like this, where it looks like yellow and green are tied for being the furthest back, it's whichever player is on the top of the train car gets to collect the loot card because they count as the furthest back on the train. Here's what the end of a game might look like. Uh, yellow has gotten out, so it's down to red and green. Red has the first player card, so they go first. And you just resolve the actions. Green is going forward as well. Red is going down. He goes down behind green. Green turns around and red shoots her off the train. And so instantly red is the winner. Uh, if they had been able to resolve all these actions and somehow they had both made it and uh, this card would have been awarded to uh, green. Uh, that is still the end of the game, even though there's multiple players left and green would have had the most loot and would have been the winner. So that's how to play Colt Super Express. It is a hoot to play and the more players, the merrier. If you want to know how to use the included expansion cards, I have another video for that. So you can go check that out and go play this great game. Thanks and see you next time from Game Like a Mother. Mm -hmm.